before the commencement of the class, we are going to review what we did in our last uh, class. And if you remember, in our last class, we looked at the meaning of foreign policy. Look at meaning of foreign policy and we vividly look at it, how it affects Nigeria. And we check some conceptual analysis of foreign policy. And I made it known to you that foreign policy is the totality or summation of what governs a state's international relation. And I also see that opportunity to explain what is domestic policy. And I made it note that domestic policy of a state is the totality of uh, interest or national interest of a state which are deemed to be achieved within the confinement or the border of a state without interfering or without relating with other states in the world for such achievements. When the objective of a policy can be achieved within the border of a state without relating with other states in the world, that becomes a domestic policy. That is opposite of foreign policy. And I hammer it that day that I would say foreign policy does not mean maybe the policy is made outside the country or is made by a foreigner. The reason we call it foreign policy is the fact that the objective of the policy can only be achieved based on interactions with other states in the world or international organizations as the case may be. And I said, there are individuals that are involved in the planning of foreign policy. So we have the state actors and the no state actors. I think from that, I asked a question in the assignment I give to you. Why some yes, of did the assignment very well, some did not. Some did not. So, and I said a state actor, the state actors are government officials. Government officials that are involved in the planning of the state foreign policy. And I give instances. I give instances as you can see here. Then I also so we have the non-state actors, and this one, well, as, as the names imply, non-state actors, they are not government officials. They are not working with the government. These individuals, the uh, individual that have thrived very well in their businesses, and because of the excellent performances they have had achieve in their various business, especially when the business has to do with international system. You have to engage them in planning the state foreign policy. And I can I give some names. This name is not exhausted. That means we still have other names. And I remember that day, I exercised your brain to differentiate between an ambassador and a high commissioner. I believe you still remember those terms. Yes, sir. Okay. Abibat. Abibat. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you sure you are with me there? Yes, sir. All right, no problem. For the purpose of today's class, we're going to look at the objective the objective of Nigeria foreign policy. 
I think for the purpose of today's class, we're looking at the objective of Nigeria foreign policy. When I say objective, please, at that time when I was explaining the foreign policy, I said the foreign policy has to do with the totality of objective or what the state intend to achieve in her interactions with other states in the world. Now, what are those specific aims that drive Nigeria foreign policy? Don't mind me. I usually use what the students have understood very well to explain what they don't understand. The other time when I was explaining foreign policy, I gave a situation, a scenario of a man and a woman. What made a man decide to marry a man? Understand? Then, what? Some of you, you are not mature enough to control yourself. Thank you. I, I thought it was from you, uh, student. No, no, that's from a uh, factor that the noise is coming from. Please, when you are not talking and you know you are in a noisy environment, smooth yourself. You can see Prudent now. She's, she, she knows that she's in a class where she, there's no noise. If you are in a noisy environment, or and as a matter of fact, I don't expect you to be in a noisy environment. You are in a class. You don't need to be distracted. Okay. So, as I was saying, I said, in a situation where a man and a woman need to get married, there are objectives that will be set for the marriage. One of such is that they want to give birth. They want to give birth. And in most cases, they will, they will a, a kind of a determine the number of children they want to give birth to. Okay? They will determine the number of children they want to give birth, either two or three. They will determine that. So the same thing, when Nigeria is planning foreign policy, there will be certain objective that Nigeria wants to achieve. And what are those things that governs Nigeria foreign policy? Those principles that govern Nigeria foreign policy are what we refer to here as the objective of Nigeria foreign policy policy. Am I communicating? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, we're going to dissect the objective one after the other. One of the objectives of Nigeria foreign policy is the promotion of war peace. One of the objectives of Nigeria foreign policy is the promotion of uh, war, peace, and justice. If you remember, if you remember, I want attention, criti critical attention here. When I was teaching you interdependent of nation, I said something about reason for interdependent of nation. And I made that note on the perspective of what is that is political reason that political is that one of the reason for interdependent of nation under political reasons. Don't be surprised, your senior colleague may be your miss today because I want them to learn some things under this topic. It's a very common topic in WASE. Okay, I want them to be here. So I said one of the reasons for political reason for interdependent of nation is to ensure war, peace, security, 
and uh, democratization of the world, and that's another political reason. So, and, and I give reason that how that can be achieved, and that that is usually achieved by forming international organizations. One of the international organizations that have been established to ensure war, peace, and justice. Who can tell me? Let, let me not, let me ask you. An international organization that has been established to ensure war, peace, justice, of which Nigeria is also a member. Can you tell me that? Who is telling me that? If you don't want to talk, I will call you. If you don't want to talk, I will call you. Uh, Nip me. Be careful. Be careful. Let me see your face here, Nip me. Why do you do that now? Yes, answer my question. Nip me, answer my question. Unmute yourself. I don't use the central padlock. First, I did not hear the question. I know you were not with me. That was why I said I'm going to bulldoze you. That was why you seized up your your video. Please take responsibility. It is important. Kayo, can you answer that question? Um, African Union. I said international organization. Yes, you are correct, African Union. But I'm trying to look up ahead as in entire world, entire world as a whole. African Union um, as a continental organization. Yes. United Nations Organization, hmm? UNO. African Union is also part. But if you check in the United Nations Organization, you will see that under, okay, you have not been taught, you'll be taught in uh, uh, SS3, your senior colleagues are at home now, they will understand how the United Nations has one way or the other help to mitigate international crisis by ensuring world peace. And we also have and organs of UNO called ICJ, International Court of Justice, that helps to as in settle disputes among the member states of the United Nations. Nigeria is one. Nigeria is one of them. And don't forget that sometimes ago Nigeria had issue with uh, Cameroon over Bakasi Peninsula. It was International Court of Justice that settled the matter. I am explaining this for you to understand the concept of promotion of war peace as one of the objectives of Nigeria foreign policy. Nigeria joined United Nations, African Union, ECOWAS, in order to ensure peace globally and justice. If Nigeria does not have peace and justice as one of the objectives for her foreign policy, when International Court of Justice presided over the case and adjudicated that the land Bakati Peninsula should be ceded to Cameroon, Nigeria will not agree. But the fact that one of the objectives of the Nigeria foreign policy beckoned on the fact Nigeria want to promote war. Nigeria accepted the judgment of a uh, international court of justice as an organ of a uh, United Nations. What I'm saying, in essence, is that one of the aims Nigeria seek to achieve international system. Okay, one of the aims Nigeria seek to inter achieve international system in her foreign policy is to ensure that there's war, peace, and justice. And Nigeria pursued this earnestly. In, as a result of her membership of uh, other Commonwealth of Nations, United Nations, African Union, ECOWAS, among all that bilateral and multilateral relationship Nigeria has engaged in. 
Is that understood, Kayo? Yes, sir. Okay, I can hear me if I slap you. Yeah, show your video now. You are you are supposed <laughs> to be serious. You come late to my class. I will report you to that. I think I was sleeping, you know. Okay, so all right. it's all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Now, the next one here, if that has been understood, is to encourage economic cooperation and self-reliance among African states. This is one of the objectives of Nigeria foreign policy. Yes. How is Toy? Is is one of, is one of your senior colleague. Oh, she's new. Uh, okay. uh, oh, so it's my it's it's my friend though. Mololua, how are you? All right. I said one of the objectives again is to encourage economic cooperations and self-reliance among African states. We are going to understand this more when you study international organization. Now, for instance, in Africa, Nigeria facilitated the formation of Economic Committee of West African State, that is ECOWAS. You will be, you will be taught in SS3. Why? Why has Nigeria ensure or facilitated the formation of uh, ECOWAS? Is to ensure a kind of economic corporations and safe lands among African states. ECOWAS at its formation in 1975 was an economic uh, oriented regional group or organization. Today, ECOWAS has gone beyond being an economic or uh, economic uh, group, but has also delved into politics, political arena in order to ensure peace in the West African sub-region. So, ECOWAS was formed in 1975 based on the activities of Nigerian government and that of the Togolese government under Jinasibe Eyadema. Just calm down, you will learn that when you get to SS3. So, Nigeria seek to achieve economic cooperation and self reliance among African state international system. And how? How has Nigeria done this? Nigeria have done this by being a member of economic uh, groups like AF AFGB, African Development Bank. We also have uh, African Economic uh, Community, that is AEC. You, you understand that more when we look at how Nigeria has displayed Africa the centerpiece of our foreign policy. That's SS3 work. Okay? Nigeria has also been or oh, is not ordinarily a member, but a founding father of Economic Community of West Africa State. In all this, Nigeria seeks to ensure cooperation and self-reliance for African states as one of her objectives deemed to achieve in her international relation or in her foreign policy. I don't know if I'm communicating. Kayo, you are lost. The way you are looking, you are lost. Mm -hmm. I know. As we are looking at the objectives of Nigeria foreign policy. That is what Nigeria seeks to achieve it in her international relation. And I say one of the purpose of Nigeria foreign policy is to encourage economic cooperation. That is, maybe you, as an African country, I, as an African country, we should have a kind of opportunity where we are going to seal a relationship. Whereby what you have, you share with me. What I don't have, I will share with you. You remember economic reason for interdependence of nation, right? Do you still remember? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Now, Nigeria is now looking at it that in Africa, because don't forget that Africa is happened to be one of the poorest continents in the world. And Charity must begin from whom you still understand that under Africa, the centerpiece of Nigeria foreign policy, that there's need to encourage economic cooperation and make African countries self-independent economically. That is what I mean by self-reliance, that African countries should be able to do some things on their own. And how can we achieve this in Africa? 
Nigeria as the broader Africa, afterwards, encourage the formation of other regional or continental organization. One of it is we have AEC, that is African Economic Community. That's helped to ensure economic cooperation among Africa. And we also have the like of ECOWAS, that happened to be a kind of body established to ensure economic liberation and integration among West African states. Nigeria is also a member of African Development Bank, is a, a, a specialized agency of uh, African Union now, have integrated. Don't forget that the president, equipment president of African Development Bank have to be a Nigerian. Hmm? Maybe that will be a question later. I will not mention the name. Okay, it's in Nigeria. So, Nigeria, Nigeria has not just developed this objective, but Nigeria has pursued this earnestly in her international relation. I have just given you one of these objectives and how Nigeria has what pursued the objective in her foreign policy. If encouraging economic cooperation and self less and more state is not one of the objectives of Nigeria foreign policy, Nigeria wouldn't have been a member of African Economic Community. Nigeria wouldn't have been a member of a economic community of West African states. Nigeria would have been committed to the objectives of the African Development Bank. Is that understood? Yes, sir. I can hear me. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. If you don't understand, please raise your hand. Though you have the button there, I will attend to you. Because my purpose of here is for you to understand. Yeah. Next one here is to promote unity and solidarity among African states. To promote unity and solidarity among African states. As a matter of fact, remember when I was talking about political reason for interdependence of nation. If we are to maintain unity, there should be a platform where all African countries will gather to share their opinion. Of course, I said something about a work of uh, African Cup of Nations at that time. During the Cup of African Cup of Nations, you find out that the players, either you are from Togo, you are from Nigeria, you are from Mali, you are from Egypt, you are from Burkina Faso, anywhere you come from, you see them, all of them, they will share pleasantry. Nigeria won't have engaged in any activity that comprise all other African states, if promotion of unity and solidarity among African states is not one of her foreign policy objectives. Since the promotion of unity and solidarity among African states is one of the objectives of Nigeria foreign policy, Nigeria has engaged or belong to African Union, ECOWAS, and other, other institutions that I have mentioned. And not only that, during Festival of Art and Culture, you see Nigeria taking leading role. And that was why Nigeria hosted the 1977 Festival of Art and Culture, first Act 77. And that is why Nigeria will also participate in African Cup of Nations, where Nigerian players with other players in the African continent, we converge for days in a competitive match where they were exchanged pleasantry. In doing this, Nigeria is proving that there's need for unity in Africa, and we are bent to ensure that this unity is uh, achieved. In terms of solidarity for Africa, Nigeria has, one way or the other, led a kind of voice, international system, clamoring for Nigeria to have a seat in the, a permanent seat, uh, as in clamoring for Africa, to have a permanent seat in United Nations Security Council. You understand that when you get to SS3, United Nations Security Council, the SS3 that are with me here will understand what I'm saying. In the UN Security Council, there are five permanent seats, and the permanent seats 
we have two, three countries from Europe, we have one from Asia, we have one from America. There's no one from Africa. You know, that is a cheating. In, in, in a kind of solidarity for Africa, Nigeria has also led a kind of voice to ensure that Africa is given a permanent seat in the United Nations Security Council. I am saying all these things to just oppose and explain the fact that Nigeria not just what say that there's need for promotion of unity and solidarity among African states, but Nigeria has also what devised means to ensure that this are uh, achieved. Because this is a common question in WASA. I have them as many that I have noted. That is why I have taken time to explain them as I am doing. Because when you are asked to state or whatever, you are expected to explain this uh, objective. Now, second to uh, another one here is the to eradicate racial discrimination in Africa and the world at large. Of course, this is a common scenario now. Abi, uh, who is going to tell me something about uh, racial discrimination, especially with a event that is unfolding itself in? United States of America. Who is going to tell me? Who is going to tell me? Patia, tell me what is happening in United States of America now as in relation to this uh, topic here. Um, racist. Does it mean you have not been listening to news? That's not too good, okay? That's not too good. You need to listen to news and know what's happening around you. Uh, I can hear me. Uh. Answer that. What is happening in U.S. in relation to what I want to explain about eradication of racial discrimination in Africa and the world at large as one of the objectives of Nigeria foreign policy. Eradication of what? I do want to tell me that you have no, you don't see what is on my on my PowerPoint. There's no problem. Yes, Kayo. So eradicate racial discrimination in Africa and the world at large. Yeah, I said, so what, is is happening, what is happening in America now, in U.S.C., that has something to do with what I, what, what is said? Okay, okay. One, um, a white policeman killed a black, so there are, there are been protests going on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. George Floyd was killed in a very humiliated manner by a white policeman in Minneapolis, in U.S.C. Of course, you should know you were taught UDHR in SS1, and that one of the core rights in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948 is freedom from torture, discriminations, among others. Racial discrimination happened everywhere in the world, especially against the black. So, and if you, you are discriminating against black, this same black you are discriminating against, they have what you have. You are no better than them. Yes. If you study American history, you find that the best man to operate on her, as in the first surgeon in United States of America, happened to be a black man. So why the discrimination? So, Nigeria, in order to prevent this global pandemic. Yes, I call it global pandemic. Nigeria made sure that in her international relation, in her foreign policy, NSLA fought against any form of racial discrimination, not only in Africa, but in the world at large. For instance, in Africa, some of you might have heard about the apartheid rule in South Africa. Until 1994, in South Africa, only the white minority governed. Nigeria rendered earnest voice 
for that country to kill and destroy the tabernacles of uh, apartheid rule in South Africa. When on the then uh, the late uh, Nelson Mandela later became the first black South African to rule the country. You will understand this more when we get to the way Nigeria has displayed Africa as the centerpiece of her foreign policy. You see how Nigeria supported the African National Congress, among others. Prudent, you are not with me here. You are doing something else. I have just trying to explain that one of the objectives Nigeria seeks to achieve in her foreign policy is to eradicate racial discrimination in Africa, and not only in Africa, in the world at large. That nobody should be discriminated against because of the color or because of uh, the whatever. Maybe you are, you, you, you are, any, any discrimination maybe it, that has to do with gender too is not allowed. Nigeria does not support this. This is one of the objectives Nigeria seeks to achieve in her international relation. Prudent explain the last point for me. So can I explain it? I don't understand. You, 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 is anybody at home that can do that for me? If you have listened to what I have explained so far, you should be able to explain that last point. Said to defend her sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity. If I may ask you, if you are relating with anybody in the world, will you, because of that relationship, want your person to be disrespected? Yes, I'm with you, Kayo. You, you, you want to interact, you want to live, so we want to achieve something. Will you, because you want to get something and allow yourself to be disrespected. No, sir. Okay. So one of the objectives of Nigeria foreign policy is to ensure that the sovereignty of the country, the independence of Nigeria, is maintained. That on no circumstance that the independent and the sovereign power of the country should be traded for anything. That is one of the objectives of Nigeria foreign policy. Do you understand it? Yes, sir. Oba Femi, do you understand it? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. Where is uh, Akin Simoy? Okay. Uh, Akin Yemi, did you understand what I just explained? Okay. Okay. All right. Then seen here is the features, features of Nigeria foreign policy. Please, the features are here. I'm not going to do a more point about them because they are in what I have explained in the objectives. I said the features of Nigeria foreign policy are in what I have explained in the objective. When I say feature, something you can see in Nigeria foreign policy. And how can you see something again foreign policy if it's not part of the objectives? Since I have discussed the objective, I don't expect you to have issue with the features. Okay. One of the features of Nigeria foreign policy is that there's no alignment with any power block in the world. I'm going to explain this a brief because it's your topic in SS3. You may not understand it. After the Second World War. The United Nations was established in 1945. Listen, the United Nations was established in 1945. Then, 
from 1945 to 1990, okay, especially 1989, because in 1989, the Berlin Wall was pulled down. The whole war was divided into two, okay? I said in 1945, the whole, from 1945 to 1990, the whole war was divided into two. We have Western Bloc and Eastern Bloc. And this period was the era of a Cold War. Take notes. The era of Cold War. The Western Bloc was governed by capitalism. And the Eastern Bloc was governed by socialism. Of course, you know what socialism, you know what's capitalism in your SS1 uh, governments. Now, some countries in the world, including Nigeria, said they will not belong to either of these blocs. Because it was a lot of this division of the world on ideological basis that led to the First and Second World War. In order to prevent the Third World War, Nigeria and other countries they would not belong to either of the bloc. Then there was a movement established. Okay, and that movement is known as no align movement now you be, you understand it when you get this this is your topic so nigeria is a member of a no align movement hence we have it here as one of the pictures of nigeria from that there's no alignment with any power block in the world that is nigeria does not belong to either western block or eastern block you understand that very well when you get to SSCs. Of course, you, this point, I have explained it. If you understood, if you have understood what I said in the objective, you should know this uh, number two here. Jessica. Jessica. Oh. Do you understand that number two now? In relation with what I explained in the objective, Yes, sir. If there's anybody who doesn't understand, feel free to raise your hand. Because all this one I have explained them. Then, I partially said this number three. I said, it makes Africa the centerpiece of her foreign policy. This is another topic separately. You are going to understand this topic separately. It's a topic in SS3, based on the legal state scheme of work. I said, it makes Africa the centerpiece of her foreign policy. Meaning that, in... Nigeria international relations, take note to listen to what I mean by Africa, the centerpiece of Nigeria foreign policy. It means that Africa should be this, the first place, that is, Africa should get first attention of Nigeria in her international relation. That is, if Nigeria is to relate with other countries in the world, or relate with other powers in the world, Africa should get the first attention. You understand it very well. I'm going to explain this concept based on the Tapa Balewa exposition in the First Republic when we get to that arena. Africa happened to be the center of Nigeria foreign policy, saying that charity of Nigeria begins from whom? Nigeria belongs to Africa. Therefore, if Nigeria belongs to Africa, whatever affects Africa affects Nigeria. In, due, in respect of this, Africa must take the largest position or the first position in Nigeria relationship with other countries in the world. That is what that means as a picture. Who does not understand that number four? Say Nigeria foreign policy is based on sovereign equality of all states. Who does not understand it? Okay. Without wasting most of my time, because I know some, some of you are trying to be passive today. Obafemi, are you here? Yes, sir. Explain that number four for me. Um, the sovereignty of, of um, Nigerian foreign policy is based on sovereign quality of all states. That's saying that the sovereignty, there will be no interference of any state into any country. 
Okay, okay. You have the idea. Just that you don't know how to put your idea together. One of the features of Nigeria foreign policy is that all states in the world, the sovereignty of all, states, all dependent states in the world should be what equal. Hmm? That is one of the objectives. Nigeria treats all sovereign states, all independent states in the world equally. That's what that means. Okay. They say it promotes war peace and defense of justice. Hmm? I think I don't need to explain this. I've explained it under the objective. I've explained it under the objective. Can you have I? Yes, sir. Okay. Whoever does not understand it should let me know. So these and many others are the features of Nigeria foreign policy. But let me quickly borrow this idea. If you know the objective of Nigeria foreign policy, indirectly you've already know the features of Nigeria foreign policy. Depend, it just depends on the way you are going to explain it. Objective of Nigeria foreign policy is a common question in WASE. I don't know how many of you really have a past question there. If you check the WASE, 2016. Where's 2016? I think I have a question there. One of you have your WhatsApp pass question there. Anybody? I'm going to... Okay, check 2016 for us. Okay. okay. Let's hold on. Why she check that for us? 